I've come farther in this sport than I ever imagined. I'm enjoying doing what I do for a living. I get paid to get in there. Fight. I'm driven to get that title, but I'm also just enjoying the ride. Carlos Condit developed a reputation as one of the fiercest guys around. He's been fighting at a top level against elite fighters for more than a decade. And it is Carlos Condit, the natural born killer, that ends it. Carlos Condit, the last welterweight champion in WEC history. Since he's come over, he's just been absolutely a monster. He's aggressive. He's coming at you with punches, kicks, knees, elbows. He throws everything. Condit mixing things up nicely here. You can make a case for him being the best striker in the 170 division. Oh, absolutely right. He's out. The biggest compliment you can give a fighter is they're terrifying to watch. Carlos Condit is that. I have this dynamic style where I bring all kinds of different things to the table. Usually it works out pretty well for me. 2011, George St. Pierre uh, tears his ACL, so has to step out for a little bit. Former Strike Force champion against former WEC champion for the UFC Interim Welterweight Championship belt. All right, gentlemen, this is it. Five rounds. <laughs> <laughs> right away, they can't wait. Uh, this oh, is man. awesome. Look at this. Diaz, uh, he's notorious for getting in a guy's head, talking trash, and getting a guy to fight emotionally. Have you ever seen anybody do that to Carlos Conor before? I had to completely disconnect emotionally and just stick purely to, to my game plan and my tactics. Carlos Condit is not only a great fighter, but he is a highly intelligent human being. Well, Carlos is getting off some good shots here. He's moving well. He's avoiding the traps that Nick Diaz is setting for him. The interim USC welterweight champion of the world, Carlos Condit. Still not satisfied, you know. I was the interim champion. I want to become the undisputed champion. Any world-class athlete is less than satisfied until they get to the top. And you will now be facing George St. Pierre for the undisputed title. Condit. That's a nice head kick. Oh, he's got you, sir. Carlos is being kicked to the head. Condit swarming St. Pierre. George is in big trouble. It looked like this was going to be Carlos Condit's night. But George St. Pierre, like he's done so many times his career, came back and took control of the fight. I, I thought I had it, man. Then Carlos Condit comes back against Johnny Hendricks, somebody that's fighting for the title now. He's hanging on him over under with two hooks. Oh, big left hook by Condit. Nice shot to the body by Carlos. That was a barn burner. This was incredible to think Carlos Condit had fought the two best people in the welterweight division, but had back-to-back -back defeats and was really in desperate need of a win. Six-ranked Martin Campman, the former Danish Thai boxing champion, nine career wins by knockout, another six by submission. Coming off those two losses, it basically just gave me a blueprint of what I needed to do different. And now Condit starts to land here against Campman. Another beautiful combination from Condit on the inside. Condit pressing forward, now lands a combination. And that one opened Martin Campman up. It's unbelievable, at 170 pounds, the kind of pace that Condit keeps. Watch out, Campman looks like he's hurt here. Martin Campman hurting for certain now, Condit piling it on. Beautiful body shot from Condit, the left hand of the liver. Carlos Condit cementing his status as the number two welterweight in the world. The results were me being able to finish Martin like I did. Carlos doesn't take any time off in between fights. We've kind of established that it's best for his body if he just maintains a certain level of fitness. It's probably why he has such great cardio too, because he takes no time off. So he's been in camp now since his last fight. So right now we're just kind of working on his strength, a little bit of power, and we're getting ready to transition into a little bit more conditioning for him. Kind of get a little side to side movement, man. So get that body up right there. There you go. That body down. Keep working, 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 working. Keep going. Driving, 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 driving. Ah, Got it. Good. Got it. 
he's going to get stronger, he's going to be more explosive. So Carlos is his strongest, his most explosive going into that fight that he's ever been to face such a dynamic fighter. Good low base. Last one, pull through. Good job. Carlos Condit is definitely a front runner to get a title shot, if not be a title holder at some point in 2014, especially with this division being wide open now. Yeah, good hips, dude. Love that. Pull the hips through the sled. Staying strong with a 10, 9, 8, 5, 6, 2, 7. Switch. Got it. The door is open for everybody in the welterweight division, and nobody more so than Carlos Condit. Feet, good feet, good feet. He says he's sick of hearing that former interim champion in front of him. He wants to be just the champion. He's shown he has the ability. This is a chance for him to sort of get back on the cycle, get back on the treadmill going in the right direction. Kind of, for all intents and purposes, gets the victory here, and he's right back in the title discussion, probably faces the winner of Hendricks and Lawler. Got it, good, right there, right there. I got the fight with Carlos Connie just by persistence, man. If Tyrone Woodley texts me one more time, he must text me 15 times a day. If the risk is high, the reward is high. Why not roll the dice? Those are the guys I want to deal with. Those are the guys I want to hear from. Why not knock off the number two guy in the world? So when I beat him, it puts me right in position to fight my next fight for the world title. Get this win over Woodley, and I'm going to get that title shot. And, you know, I'm going to get that belt around my waist.